Welcome into Drew's Daily Diamond for Friday, April 19th. I am Drew Martin breaking down the games here on a full Friday slate, getting us ready for the weekend. Got a bunch of night games and actually one afternoon game as we head to Wrigleyville for our first game up with the Miami Marlins facing the Chicago Cubs in Wrigley Field. We get the Cubs 11 and 7 on the season. The Fish just 4 and 15 out the gate. It's been a rough start for them. They do have Jesus Lazardo on the hill and Imanaga going for the Cubs. So two Southpaws going at it, which is a big part of our handicap here. The Cubs minus 160 as the home favorite. No total out just yet. Those usually don't come out till the morning with the home Cubs games. It is looking like 50 degrees in Chicago, which I don't think helps Miami here. Of course, South Florida, Lazardo, he is from Parkland, Florida. So the, the colder weather. I think might help the Cubs, but really guys, Lazardo has given up 12 earned runs in his last nine innings pitch. Now, granted, it was against the Braves and the Yankees, two pretty good lineups, but the fact is the Cubs, the number one lineup in baseball, I don't think a lot of people realizing it here. They have been knocking around lefties. They, uh, in terms of OPS, the only team in Major League Baseball with over a 900 team OPS off of South Paul. So I think they're able to get to Lizardo here. And Emmett Nike going for the Cubs. He's been pretty good. And up against the worst lineup in baseball, really, when you go by weighted runs created plus, second worst, only, only better than the Chicago White Sox. And that's not where you want to be for this fish lineup. They're also injured as well, not only in starting pitching, but Jake Berger's been banged up. So I think they're going to have a little bit of a tough time scoring some runs here. And the Cubs went in four of their last five all on the road. And they did have an off day yesterday, or actually did not play yesterday, but still being at home here. They've scored 16 runs in their last two games. So this lineup is hot right now. Minus 160, yes, a little bit pricey, but I think the Cubs in the afternoon slate is uh, what we're getting after here for first game up. Let's go with the Cubs in Wrigley Field. Heading to the night slate up next, guys. we got 740 Eastern. The Baltimore Orioles and the Kansas City Royals. It's Alex Marsh versus Dean Kramer. Looks like minus 131 on the Orioles. That's available in the global market. Looking at the Wager Talk Live odd screen right now. That is the low water mark here. It's as high as minus 142 if you search around. But I actually like the favorite here. So going to be buying on them. Minus 131 in the overnight betting market. This is the Baltimore Orioles, guys. And if you've been watching the show this week, I mean, we, we've been hitting on them pretty much uh, every show, I believe, that they've been playing anyway. Not yesterday, but hey, they're back playing baseball today. And this is the most profitable team in really all of sports. Just quickly here, guys, because I've already gone over it a couple times. Plus 64 units after that uh after that Wednesday win that they had. And that means $100 better, up over $6,000 betting every Orioles game since the opening day of 2022. Likely the most profitable team in all of sports. They got Kremer on the hill here. And he's been solid, 14 to 2 strikeout to walk ratio. And they also have that top five bullpen behind them. So they've been good. The lineup's solid, good bullpen arms. I think we get a decent start out of Kramer here. And going for the Royals is, is Marsh. His numbers are decent as well. His last time out against the New York Mets did give up four earned runs and only five innings pitched and was not missing very many bats, just two strikeouts in that. So I think that's uh, kind of an omen here to, to be on the Orioles. And actually, the, the Royals offense is very cold right now, just eight runs scored in their last four games, so only averaging two runs per game. Their last four, they just lost to the Chicago White Sox, now going up against the Baltimore Orioles. This step up in class, I mean, the Royals have been good. One of the better surprises in baseball sitting at 12-7, and seven, but the Orioles have just been great for quite some time here. And again, guys, going back to the bullpen, which, you know, today, after not a lot of games yesterday and a full slate today, it does look like all hands on deck, all active bullpen arms should be ready across baseball. But a top five bullpen in Baltimore and a bottom five bullpen for the Kansas City Royals. So despite that, they've been playing good baseball, but I think they go down here at home. Give me minus 131 on the Orioles to go on the road to Kansas City and win this one. We got 810 Eastern. 
7-10 local time here in Minnesota for our next game up. An AL Central matchup with the Detroit Tigers and the Minnesota Twins going at it. It's Flaherty and Ryan, and it looks like the Twins, about a minus 150 price tag as the home favorite. Seven in the hook being the total. So we get kind of a low total here with a decently sized favorite, which usually when that happens, you know, the market is telling us runs are going to be at a premium and we can get Detroit at plus 135 as the dog. That's the side I like it here is the Detroit Tigers, you know, a team that's been profitable on the season and they've won six of their first eight road games. So they're on the road here again. And for whatever reason, they've been playing well when being on the road. Now, a big part of this handicap with the Tigers and the Twins is for both starters, it's back-to-back -back starts against the opposing lineup. So that usually points me towards, you know, an advantage the bats for the offense, really, because they're going to be seeing the pitcher for the second time in less than a week. Flaherty did have decent numbers against uh, against the Twins in his first start on April 14th. Six innings, six hits, three earned runs. Ryan, he actually pitched well against the Tigers. His six innings, one earned run with 12 Ks. But going up against them again, I think that the Tigers are able to do enough here. And plus this Twins team... They have not been that great. They're minus five units already on the season, one and four at home. So they've only won one game at home all year long. They're minus 20 in terms of run differential. And going up against the Tigers here, again, guys, going back to the later innings, all arms on deck, this Tigers bullpen by my metrics, the number one bullpen in baseball that's really helping them win games. It's not that the Twins bullpen is bad. Uh, it's top 10, you know, right there at 9, 10, depending what metrics you want to go off of. But still, it's an advantage towards the Tigers here. And they've been playing good baseball, particularly on the road. So getting plus 135 with the underdog, risk 100 to win 135. Give me the Detroit Tigers to go on the road and win in Minnesota. Heading down the list here, guys. Going with an interleague matchup up next, 640 Eastern with the Chicago White Sox and the Philadelphia Phillies. It's Turnbull versus Krochik, the lefty going for the White Sox. Total of eight, minus 165. That's the Phillies as the home favorite. Does look like 60 degrees and 10 miles per hour blowing out towards center field. Something to notice here with a little bit of weather throughout the Friday MLB slate. But breaking this one down. You know, talked about Crotchet. He, he, he's been good. He's really the White Sox ace. If you're ever going to look to bet on the Sox, it's probably when he's pitching would be the uh, way to go. He's a lefty, a former first round pick, 97, 98 miles per hour. He really gets after it from a velocity standpoint. And he has 31 strikeouts in four starts this season. But Philadelphia is a, a pretty Pretty talented lineup, in my opinion, and they've won three straight games and they're off of a, a schedule spot here. They're off of a, a home off day, meaning their last game was at home and they had an off day. That's usually a good schedule spot to look to bet on a team. And Turnbull's been good. Their starter under a two ERA on the year. So a slight bullpen advantage for the Phillies as well. And going back to the White Sox, just three and 15 on the season. They only have one road game for the whole, only one road game win for the whole season. So I don't think they get it here in Philadelphia. It's a little too pricey, not too pricey, but uh, minus 165 isn't something that I, I really like to lay a lot in baseball, but I'm not going on the White Sox here. So it's the favorite with the Phillies, minus 165 price tag here in Philadelphia. We get next game up, 640 Eastern. It's the Houston Astros. And the Washington Nationals, Mackenzie Gore going for the Nats, the lefty, and Justin Verlander making his 2024 debut for the Houston Astros. He's commanding a minus 170 price tag here. So pretty hefty favorites for the Strohs on the road, eight in the hook being the total. And part of the reason why I think they're such heavy favorites here is Verlander, the big name, the Astros, you know, they've been good for quite some time here. But the, the thing is, breaking it down a little bit further, you know, his first start, that's always volatile in itself, talking about Verlander. He didn't pitch in spring. He's had two minor league uh, minor league rehab starts, one in AAA, one in AA, and he has been smacked around. Seven innings pitched, giving up 14 hits and 14 runs in those minor league starts. So it's always a little bit tricky. We've talked about this before in terms of, 
bringing minor league, you know, double A, triple A numbers into the majors. But I, I don't know. That worries me, guys. And it would definitely, well, it is keeping me off of laying minus 170 with the Strohs and Verlander because of that. I think he's going to be on a pitch count as well. So, and their bullpen hasn't really been great. It's bottom 10 in baseball by bullpen whip so far this season. And Mackenzie Gore going for the Nationals, 8-10 and 10 on the season and really playing some of their best baseball of the year right now, some of their best baseball in quite some time, multiple years, they were just on the road in Los Angeles playing the Dodgers, a lot of people's number one power rated team in Major League Baseball, and they won two of three on the road against the Dodgers. And when you look at it, plus 200 underdogs with one of those wins and plus 360 as well. So they have really been making some money just in the last week or so. Um, and Gore's been good. You know, he's a top watch guy, like a, a high ceiling guy, if you will. He's got good velocity, uh, 2.8 ERA through his th first three starts. And just last time out, 11 strikeouts and only one walk. So I think he has a good start here against this Stroh's lineup. The Astros just 6-14 and 14 on the season, down almost double-digit units. I'm going against them again here, guys. I think Washington at home. Plus 150, risk 100 to win 150. Hey, the home dog is barking in Washington, D.C. Give me the Nationals plus the 150. We do have a nightcap for the slate and heading a mile high here. 840 Eastern start. It is the Colorado Rockies hosting the Seattle Mariners. We get Hancock versus Hudson. Total of an 11, and it's minus 130. That is the Seattle Mariners as the road favorite. This one is uh, uh, breaking down this, the starting pitching matchup here, guys, which two former first round picks, both from the SEC, both Bulldogs, one from Georgia and Hancock, one from Mississippi State. That's Hudson. But breaking down Hancock first, um, he's a young kid, I believe just 23, 24 years old, out of the University of Georgia. He has seven Major League Baseball starts. This is his fourth start this season in his second road start. In his first road start, it was against Milwaukee. He went three innings and got uh, he got torched for eight earned runs. He he's only pitched on the road in MLB three times. He's pitched ten innings and giving up thirteen runs for his career. So for whatever reason, going on the road has not has not been good for Hancock here. And he's going to one of the most difficult places to pitch in terms of Coors Field and up against this Rockies lineup that isn't any great shakes numbers wise this season. But I think some of that is due to their schedule. They really haven't played at home very much. I mean, they've only had two home series for the season. So this would be the third. And they've faced some pretty tough pitchers in cores in their home games. Merrill Kelly, Zach Gallen, just as just to name a couple. They are off of a, a open open mark on their schedule yesterday. So being back at home and something with the Rocks is for multiple seasons now, probably for, you know, the, the, the whole, what they've been around since 1993. I mean, they have home road dichotomy as big as any team out there. So getting them back at home, even though their kind of full season metrics wouldn't show it so much this year, just because there's not enough of a sample size, I would look to be betting more on the Rockies at home. I mean, they're just four and 15 for the year, but because of this schedule situation, I actually think it's a buy low opportunity on the Rockies. We get them plus 115 here at home. Looks to be 43 degrees in Colorado. I think I, I lean under, but with Hudson on the hill, um, I, I think Colorado plus the 115 is the way to go in this one, guys. So uh, for the nightcap, give me the Colorado Rockies, the home dog barking again, plus 115, risk 100 to win 115. So that's six games. For the Friday slate, this is Drew's Daily Diamond for Friday, April uh, April 19th. They are three dogs, three favorites. So hope we, hopefully we cash uh, a bunch of these and bounce back for them off of yesterday's uh, video. But guys, thanks for tuning in. Please smash that like button. Comment below. Let me know what you're looking to bet this weekend. And uh, hey, cash those tickets, guys. Thanks for tuning in.